Hello everyone and welcome back to my Mars colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.6.1. .1. In this episode I hope to get Mars Transit Vehicle 1 completely set up and ready to go back over to Mars. We want to get all the supplies, uh, an extra module for habitation, and uh, make sure everything is working properly. So uh, with that in mind, I decided to create a slightly larger version of my Kasei launcher, this time with eight boosters. We're, we're going up in scale, it's like with Energia, first having four boosters, and now uh, we're going full Vulcan on it, basically. Uh, that is the idea, and that is to expedite matters. Hopefully. Hopefully I've gotten the Delta Vs and all right. I don't know if the launch script... Actually, let's just test it. We'll try the launch script. I don't think it should have any problem just because I added four extra boosters, so run Kasei. I haven't made any modifications to the launch script. Hopefully I haven't forgotten anything. As far as recoverability is concerned, we'll see whether I have time at the end to do that, uh, to try that out again. Okay, it's suddenly a large launch vehicle. It is uh, heavier than Saturn V now. So I guess Kerbal Space Program is treating it like a large launch vehicle. <laughs> so we've got two launches of this, and then we've got a Sagita launch to the Nerva stage. We need to fit an additional hydrazine tank to the lander. Also, I wanted to fit some more nitrogen to it, and we have to top it off with food water and uh, lithium hydroxide so it's already got the oxygen so yeah we're gonna visit the Nerva with the lander still attached to it and uh, this time we'll have the ability to, for the crew to EVA and I've put hydrazine in the pod this time I, I, I now hopefully we've got everything we need this time to do the job but this launches straight to Mars Transit Vehicle 1. Maybe with the extra boosters, the turn is a little bit slow, though. I should have edited the launch script so that uh, the flight path was a little bit more optimized. Okay, we're on the last few seconds on the boosters, and we gotta find out whether I have a staging problem or not. So far, so good in general, though. Pretty clear skies, just some wispy clouds around. Okay. Hmm. It decided not to jettison them? Okay. Well, I'll manually do it then. Whoa, I didn't mean to zoom in. Okay, separation. Off they go. Move the fairings up. Alright, I think it's okay to separate the fairings now. Hopefully. Ooh. Oh no, it wasn't. That's not fair. Oh, that's hilarious. It went right through the... Okay, anyway. <laughs> it went right through the inner stage, more or less. Oh, there are the engines. Oh, this is sort of epic. Okay. I'll just manually launch it. It's fine. I, it's too complicated otherwise. There's our supplies and some xenon gas, of course. Oh well, uh, let's try this again. Alright, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition. Forty-five engines for those keeping count. Okay, I think they're all running properly. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, we've got a minute left in the stage. 32 kilometers. Everything looking fine. Okay, getting ready for booster sep. I'm allowing the G-forces to get high. Okay, booster separation. This time, I'll uh, wait on the fairings, I think. Uh, 
Uh, maybe after... Uh, maybe between stages. I pulled that with my really big rocket that launched a Saturn V. It seemed to be a better deal. Okay, well, fairings. Alright, yep, yeah, that's fine. And separation. Okay, looking good. Okay, about to make orbit. And shut down. 206 by 173, or 174. And we have enough fuel to do the job. Relative inclination 1.1 degrees, about the same as usual. Okay, so where is it? It's uh, it's actually over here. So maybe, maybe this ascending node over here is not such a bad place, but probably it's not going to be exactly there. And maybe I'll run with that one. But uh, when we're right at the node, we can probably do a mere 1.1 degree correction now. Okay, settling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay, and... Now we can do some minor adjustments with RCS. Okay, 0.5 kilometers, so if we, hopefully we don't bang into it or anything. 7.2 meters per second, and that'll be done using the RCS. Okay, we're approaching the target at a somewhat safer distance of 3.46 kilometers. Still got this stage with us. Well, let's just get through this stage right now. Okay, and let's not have that stage firing his thrusters when we separate. And we actually need the decoupler separation. Separation. Okay. And we need to extend the nozzle and switch mode. And that seems fine. We are, of course, planning to deliver some of this fuel to Mars Transfer Vehicle 1, um, but we need 18,000 units liters of methane and 25,000 liters of oxygen, so well, maybe we'll just be able to deliver all of that. I don't know. Uh, there's going to be another launch, of course, and I'll be able to deliver more, so we could try and reserve some fuel in here for deorbiting or something. Oh, I forgot, these uh, vernier thrusters require a pressurized tank. Shoot. So they can't be used in this situation. This is not a service module tank. Uh oh, that's going away. Okay, let's wait a bit. Oh, there it is. And re nope, but let's sell the fuel down. And reignition.
Okay, that's got a nice closest approach distance. And that's... We are entering render range already, so it's been pretty smooth. Uh, it looks like we're nowhere near the 18,000 methane and 25,000 oxygen after all, so... We will need help from the second launch to top it up. Oh, I forgot to enable crossfeed on these thrusters. Shoot. Wonders were turning so slowly. Okay. Well, we're on the fuel end of things, and that uh, highlighted port should be one of these propellant only docking ports, so that's good. Okay, let's try negative parallel. Uh, there seems to be something wrong with the nav ball again. What's going on does not comport with anything resembling reality. We're headed towards the solar panels again. I don't know what's up. Okay, let's see. Does that have us drifting? Yeah, that's have has us drifting the wrong way. Let me see if going to a tracking station and come back helps. Okay, uh, now the nav ball is making a little bit more sense. Honestly. Okay, so realistic speak re realistically speaking, this would probably uh, dock up front because it's got the food, water, and oxygen, and they'd have to get in there. But then. We sort of blocked the way with this xenon gas tank, and it's all complicated. So, we'll just dock it here. Okay, we have connected. Well, let's deliver the stuff. I think we'll only fill up one set of the hydrazine tanks. We don't need that much. On Mars Trans Vehicle 2, we only had one set. Okay, and then food, water, oxygen, sorry, food, water, uh, lithium hydroxide, and nitrogen. I think I'll just use ship manifest for that. It's too complicated to get all the places where that stuff fits. Okay, I've completed the transfers. I hope you don't mind not hearing the ship manifest sound. And we are going to undock here. I left some fuel in here, uh, and we'll see how much delta V we have. I'm not sure, actually. So, undock. Okay, nothing violent happening. Good. And make sure we're controlling from here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can never tell. Uh, 2,500 will definitely be enough. We kept a little bit too much in here, but that's fine. Uh, that'll be enough to deorbit. Assuming it's reading it correctly, I don't know if it's... I assume it's reading it correctly. All right. Let's just get clear, and then we'll just do retrograde right now. We still... We're gonna bring another module to it, and it's 279 tons. How does it get so heavy? I swear, uh, it's heavier than I thought it was going to be. But we're full up on the methane and oxygen there, uh, except our tugs are not quite full. Um, we need a little bit more xenon gas, which I've already got on the next launch. And otherwise, you can see the food is full, water is full, oxygen is full, lithium hydroxide is full, but we need more of it, judging from the other mission. The other mission actually carries uh, 7,400 lithium hydroxide. It used less than half of it so far. Well actually about a quarter of it. We're expecting that we need about 4,000 for one trip. So uh, we'll uh, add that to the module coming up. And yeah, so you can see our situation there. The new module will have full shielding. Um, right now the B330 doesn't have shielding and the molten salt reactor doesn't have shielding. I don't know if that makes a difference, but anyway, there's Earth. Okay, yeah, let's get Earth and Mars Trans Vehicle 1 and this in the same shot. Okay, I'm done with it wiggling around. Sell the fuel down and ignition. Off we go. 
Okay, that's pretty definitive. Let's have the second launch. Okay, here we go. The module that we're gonna add is a USI Pioneer module. Hopefully it'll work out for us. Of course, I'm the one that's sort of configuring the USI modules for, uh, for Kerbalism, as far as I know. So I'm just relying on my own configuration. Let's hope it's good. We'll see. I don't know if it's got the right... I mean, I didn't manually input the volume uh, that the Kerbals can reside in. I'm assuming it has its own way of calculating that based on the dimensions of the module. So hopefully it adds a little bit more habitability and they're not going to go as crazy as the crew of MTV2 may go. Who knows? SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. We're using the 8 booster version again. Mainly because I like the look of it. Does look good, doesn't it? And launch. This would be about equivalent of uh, if you replace the upper stage of SLS with something a little bit more robust, like you know a J2 stage, and then slapped eight Falcon cores on it. Would probably get about the same deal. This is also carrying some xenon gas for us and a lot of nitrogen. And of course the re remaining lithium hydroxide and also a water recycler. Oops. If you recall, MTV1 was originally fitted with a uh, water recycler that I wasn't sure about its effectiveness. It didn't seem to be working right. So I made my own water recycler and that's what we've got on here and that's what we put on MTV2. So we needed to make sure to put that on MTV1 as well. Alright. Booster set. And off they go. Very nice. Me and my asterisks. Alright, fairing set. And stage separation. Alright, so uh, more xenon gas up there. That's the module we actually want to permanently attach with some nitrogen tanks here. And of course the same stage that we had last time. So let's extend the antennae and solar panels. Okay, about to make orbit and we'll end up with about the same margin as last time. Well, maybe a little bit less, but it'll be enough. And shut down. A little bit high on the apoapsis, that's why we ended up with less. So, yep, anyway, we will plot for a rendezvous. Okay, we are turning to the node. Selling the fuel down. And... Well... Yeah, close enough. Ignition. We're actually deliberately increasing our, inc increasing our inclination to place the node, the ascending or descending node, I forget, probably descending node, uh, at the location of rendezvous. It's weird, but it seems to work better. Okay, the mid-course adjustment has been completed, and we're gonna turn that off and separate off this stage. And... RCS forward. Oh, we need to enable crossfeed again. Okay. And then target negative relative velocity. Extend the nozzle and do that sort of thing. Okay, ignition. Yep, okay. Uh, we don't want that. Okay, I'll take that for now. Let's move closer. So the launcher can carry 58 tons to this orbit, incidentally. Worth noting. Delta V to get to this orbit is basically the same as we would plan to get to Mars. Okay, we are approaching. I don't think uh, the docking port we went for last time is going to be the most convenient one. We'll see. We can get closer, though. 
we're closing at 0.6 meters per second, not the fastest speed ever. Okay, now closing. It looks okay as far as the nav ball is concerned. Okay, we are approaching. Earth in the background, looking good. Okay, closing in. And... Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know you want to. Come on. Oh, okay, finally. All right. Well, the easiest thing to get situated is the xenon gas, so. All right, it's topped off, but we didn't really need all of it. That's fine. Okay, we really need to get rid of that module now. So we're going to undock again and fling it off because we have to get this proper and we're eventually gonna put this module this pioneer module on this docking port here opposite the quest airlock of course okay good enough and decouple node right well xenon gas is away I wish it would clear a little bit more than that but we can use this bit to it sort of spin stabilized somehow. Backing away from it. Why does it show no connection? Mm, that's worrying. Well, as long as Smart ASS and the RCS thrusters work, I'm I'm okay. It'll be fine. For now, we just want to go straight back here so we get on the other side of the quest airlock. Oh, there's a roll. The station's rolling. That's wonderful. Let's stop that, please. That explains why we're a bit out of position. I'm not going to have it do anything except for kill rotation, and hopefully its reaction wheels do that job. Um, I did add three of them here, so that's good. I don't want to turn on the RCS on it. No, I didn't want that. Okay, well, now we're going to have to push ourselves over there. Uh, other way. Okay, lining up. Things are looking good. Okay, here we go. And we've got it on. Okay. Well, that's really all we have to do. The recycler is on the top there, the water recovery system. And then these are supplementary nitrogen. And then, whoops. And then there's a tank here for the lithium hydroxide. So all is well. And, uh, oh, we can transfer some of the fuel here. I don't know if we can top off the tugs, but then again, we probably, yeah, it depends. It'd be helpful for pushing out, but they use a different fuel mixture than the engine, than the ED4 engine, so that's a complication. I think we'll keep it to that. We'll deorbit this stage. It probably has too much, but... I don't know if that's going to be enough space to stop them from going crazy. We'll see. Might be that we need another one of the, these B-330s instead. Okay, let's just jet. Oh, we can't throttle up. Ah, because I don't know why it has this problem right now. Okay, well, I'll just tracking station it. This is bogus, obviously. This clearly has a controller in it. I don't see what the problem is. It's got communications and everything. Um, it even has an internal antenna. I don't see why we shouldn't be able to control it. So, okay. Yeah, I'll just tracking station that and we'll get on with the next launch, which will have crew 
which will attempt to attach hydrazine tanks to the lander that is currently uh, on the Nerva, and hopefully I won't forget anything this time. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are lined up with the Nerva stage, which is in a high orbit. Well, not high, high orbit, but higher than a low Earth orbit, I guess, however you want to look at it. It takes a little bit more delta V to get there, in other words. So, yep, and a bit of an inclination thing going on that we'll have to deal with, but we should be as good as it gets from here. We've got Obman Kerman, uh, Katkus Kerman, Tandler Kerman, and Maul Kerman. Maul Kerman on the first, on her first flight, a scientist. The uh, we have one pilot and two engineers. So hopefully things will go well. We will see. So throttle up. I'll just do it manually because of the rendezvous. And we've got two boosters. Ignition. And launch. Okay, preparing for booster separation. Okay, booster set. And off they go and probably rip apart because I didn't hold on to them through max Q, but it's alright. It's alright. Okay, well, we've pretty much corrected the inclination. I let the G-forces go up a little bit high. Well, it'll be over soon. It's fine. And separation and ignition and nozzle extension. Okay, launch escape system jettison. Off that goes. Docking port is there. That's always helpful. Well, actually, we're not going to be docking, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just be floating alongside and doing the EVA to attach to the things. Okay, and shut down. 254 by 203. We might have, I mean, it's not strictly necessary, but I guess I'll use the fuel in this stage. Why not? So we are behind, which is good. We are very much in line, also good. Okay, that's enough work from this stage. Separation. Has refilled its liquid oxygen tanks. I was hoping to deorbit this, but yeah, the electric charge is out. I keep forgetting to recharge it. Needs that. Oh well, anyway. We are gonna proceed with this stage now. Unlocking the fuels. Hopefully that doesn't mess up the engines. We've got all the stuff down here. We've got... Uh, I don't know how, well, okay, I do have an idea how to get the food, water, and oxygen on, but not food, water, and oxygen, food, water, nitrogen, and lithium hydroxide, um, but we'll see. Main thing is these little tanks, hydrazine and nitrogen, those have to be slapped on by a Kerbal. The Kerbal should be able to carry those in its inventory, so hopefully that'll be all right. Looks like uh, we'll be over Texas here, and that's the Gulf of Mexico down there, yeah. So, good times. We might be rendezvousing directly above Florida. And might need the main engine for this. Okay, so, well, um, I think we've, it's a good enough target. Let's point towards it. Okay, well, we can't get the Earth and this in the same shot. Oh, well.
It's rotating. Okay, over here. Can we just kill rotation here? And I guess we'll have to turn on RCS for it to do that. Oh, uh, maybe 12 meters is fine. Let's park it here. All right, six millimeters per second. Okay, Cactus EVA, please. EVA works. That's important. We've got the hydrazine this time. Um. All right, we are in business. Pod looks a lot bigger with the Kerbal on the outside, huh? I mean, uh, when you look at the BDB pod I was using in in the Je ne sais quoi series, JNSQ, um, there are pods, those pods are really small. <laughs> this pod can clearly carry four Kerbals, there's no question about that. Hmm. In fact, it was designed to at least be able to seat four humans. I think it's about the uh, a little bit larger than the Apollo, maybe a little bit smaller than Orion. Okay, well, tool. Um, we don't need the connector port. The RCS ports we'll do as a separate thing, not not right now. So we'll leave those be. Okay, um, you're right on the thing. Uh, I'm gonna equip the tool. Yeah, split one off. Equip. And G. Grab. Should be able. Oh, uh, I think it's reading the the tank size when it's not resized instead of its normal resized size hmm i don't suppose the kerbal can carry this oh yes yes that's right okay well but this box still can't carry the oh gosh yeah th this is still too big and it's non-resized. I mean, by by default, it's only only a few liters, but it's not understanding that. Okay. Oh, it, okay. Uh, up, 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 up. He wasn't really grabbed onto it. It fooled me. Okay, now it's presumably mounted there. We just need to get close enough that the Kerbal can do the attachment without moving around too much. I actually tried to use non-procedural tanks initially, but they they all didn't want to have hydrazine in them. Well, at least the ones that were spherical, much to my annoyance. So I settled for procedural tanks because I didn't seem to have good ones otherwise. And see maneuvering. Now let's try and park it here. Okay, seven millimeters per second we'll have to do. Okay, Kerbal. Wow, you drifted off. Just need to get a position in the middle of the tank and any location on the pod, really. Um, that would seem likely. Okay. Grab and um, that'll be fine. Does it work? Uh, holy, okay. It's not really where I wanted it actually. 
We could probably put it on this platform down here, eventually, if we scooch it over. But actually, that's pretty good. At least it's sort of vaguely attached to... No, not really. Let's just not talk about the details. Um, the, the crew can later on move it if necessary. Let's just get the other one onto the other side. So... Well, we could scooch it over bit by bit, I suppose. Okay, they're not that heavy, so they're not going to imbalance the whole thing. Hopefully. And really, on the opposite side of that tree would be best. Maybe we'll move the other one too. I say tree, but that's the a heat shield for the thrust from the engines. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Doesn't really want to tuck in there. I guess that's a collider thing. Okay, let's see. Grab. And can you attach it there-ish? Okay, I, that's close enough to the analogous location on the other side. All right. So now, even more fun. We'll try and transfer the resources using the connector ports. Well, we can just attach it to the box. All right, that's fine by me. Okay, link. Link. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Out of lithium hydroxide? I don't understand. Yeah, relax. Uh, all the things are there. Stop being so crazy. Okay. And don't fire the RCS ports. So, we have this tank and this tank. And we would like to move that stuff in to this tank. Okay, excellent. And let's also verify that our newly attached tanks are actually properly attached to everything by transferring the nitrogen in them up to this. Okay, seems good to me. Catcus, um, well, still got enough fuel, I think. Unlink. All right, that'll do. We don't have to take the port in or anything. Okay, I do need Cacus's inventory. We're going to attach the RCS ports. Hopefully their configuration is just correct. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Um, okay, one on. We practically have to boink into this thing in order to get these RCS ports on. Well, I noticed those were working, but this one didn't fire. But then again, this one didn't fire either. Well, we'll see. Can we check right now? Whether this is all worthwhile or not. Ah, uh, no, this is the default ports. Shoot. Yeah, I can tell by the ISP. I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, these aren't working. All right, no, uh, sorry to bug you. But we need those taken off, actually. Good thing to test, of course. Wouldn't want to go all the way to Mars with something in the KIS, KIS container, thinking that it's 
proper and then it turns out it's all messed up uh, grab really should put some sort of door indicator on this thing but okay cactus is back on and we're good so these are more or less empty we've done the job I mean, except for the thruster bit but that was a bonus anyway the orbit retro okay we are go for service module separation and set and set okay yeah oh this wasn't really the best orbit to come down we're gonna end up in venezuela or something well we could probably maybe coast on to the south atlantic not exactly where they normally pick well they're carbonauts and astronauts who knows maybe they're brazilian i'm not really sure why it's still trying to hold pitch when i turned off that function okay we're pretty much through the worst of it here i'll check the total g-forces once it's calmed down we are currently well brazil uh 5.3 g's overall I, I, that might have been on the way up though i'm not sure it's held pretty steady at 4 g's on the way down okay forward heat shield jettison Ooh, i always hate that okay arm need to work on the colliders so that they don't interfere with each other are the two parachutes different yeah the two parachutes are different okay well fine need to check on that i don't know how that happened and plop all right recover okay they are back mars transfer vehicle one is ready to go to mars so we just need to get the crew up there the nerva is ready to push the lander over to mars so that's all good we don't have a payload for the candle tug yet but we're gonna have a whole lot of payloads going over to mars on this window anyway so i'm sure it'll get to do something but with that i'll say thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time